I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. Check out what I have here today, a new racer. This guy is super, super sleek. Look at this. This is a really nice offering from Awesome. This is the F200 High Edition, the high-end edition. Uh, high-end because there's a lot of really cool stuff on this quad. Uh, already, right out of the gate, we have the Runcam Swift, the Swift uh, full version with OSD on here. So you have battery telemetry, you have aircraft name, and all that good stuff. We also have Awesome Hollow Core Shaft F4 motors by T motor. So these are super nice motors. They're F40s, 2600 KVs, and you have built-in LEDs on the very bottom with bumpers on the bottom. They also give you extra hardware that comes along with it. With if this is going to work if you decide to take these off, these little bumpers or the LEDs, if you ever have to remove those, use these shorter screws so you don't put these back up into the motors without these bumper guards and damage your motors. Uh, but right away, I saw that this has the awesome F4 flight controller on here and it has a built-in VTX on here with an LED on the inside. Now, it is different than the previous version of this because they took the mount that goes uh, right off the flight controller off and they just ran a cable out around the back and up and mounted it right here instead of having it come off directly off the flight controller, which is actually probably a better setup than having uh, you know a large stem coming off your flight controller. It just it kind of cleans up the stack inside there really nicely. Now you do have pretty nice four. This is four millimeter. This is three uh, K carbon fiber on here with beveled edges as well. So that's also pretty nice. Uh, inside the pack, you also get two straps, which I'm going to put on there for our flight demo coming up and you get those uh, four different packs of screws and two sets of props. So we're going to run these props on here uh, for the stock setup. I'm going to run everything stock on here and show you how uh, this performs out in the field. Now I'm expecting that with this motor, this power system on here, 20 amp BL Heli, we have D-Shot 600 running on here. And uh, unlike the last version of this, the standard, uh, I believe the, the first version of this didn't have true D-Shot on it. So it's nice we have great uh, digital signal protocol on here. And that's going to make these motors super smooth. Now, if you look at these motors closely, they look very familiar to the Shuriken X1 motors. So I believe these are exactly the same motors that came on the Shuriken X1. And that was a big favorite with a lot of people. So I'm expecting that this quad at this 200 size is gonna have plenty of power. Now it does run Betaflight 3.1 on here and you can flash that. There is a boot uh, tab section right next to the USB port. And a lot of these flight controllers, they do have tabs right next to the USB port. But you could update this to 3.2 and run that awesome dynamic filter on there and make it fly just a little bit better. Now it does have wires that have already been coated. You could probably run a little bit of electrical tape around this to hold these down a little bit better. But one of my favorite features about this quad is that a lot of these frames that came out recently, you have to take off the four bottom screws and release, or at least two bottom screws and release a side rail. And with this design, they made it really easy to remove the top plate and get to the internals of the stack. So I'm going to remove this last screw here and I've got the other three screws to the side and now check this out. Boom. The top plate comes off and I can access to put in any size receiver up to an XSR up inside here. Uh, so pretty nice. They have plenty of space inside there. Um, the VTX itself, the button is over here on the right hand side actually on the left hand side of the quad and it's a little bit hard to get to. You can see the LED down in here for the uh, VTX itself. It's running on 25, 200 and 400. So the way you turn that or change it, it's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to plug in the quad here. I'll turn on the radio first. Welcome to Okay, plug in the quad. And I didn't see any other reviewers show this, so this would be pretty important. So um, you can see that it's flashing one and then A right there. And that is the band that we're on and the channel. So if you want to change the power of this VTX, press and hold this for around 10 seconds. And then you'll start to see it say 
three, hold it just a little bit longer. And you have three power levels here. You have 25, 200, and 400. So now if I press that button again, you'll go back to one, two, and three. And one is 25 milliwatt, two is 200, and three is going to be 400 milliwatts. So I'm gonna press and hold there, and then it'll go back to A and start flashing again. So when you press and hold, that makes your selection. And that's how you change the power on the VTX. That's pretty simple. Now, one other tip I wanted to share with you guys is hooking up your receiver correctly to this quad. Uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult because it came with these two wires right here. And, you know, one would assume that these were S bus and they plug right into this port on this side right here. But I couldn't find this port inside Betaflight in the ports tab selecting S bus. Uh, I just got no stick movement in the channel maps uh, where the receiver tab is. So I, I had a frustrating time trying to hook up my X. 4R Tyrannus receiver uh, with this particular cable. It just didn't want to work. So I shifted over to try UART2, which is on this side over here. And I have a four pin connector right here that I sourced from my shop. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to move this wire over to one slot over because the way it can it had the wire over on the outside. So your signal wire needs to go over one slot over. And then when you plug it in, it will access the signal. So once you plug this in and you go inside Betaflight and you select in the ports tab, when you select Serial RX over on UART2, it will show up in the channel maps. Uh, and select S bus in the configuration and you should be all good to go there. Uh, once you go to the receiver tab, you'll start seeing your sticks moving. Uh, otherwise, using this side just didn't work for me. Uh, and one more note is that when you're putting on this strap right here, you don't have to go through and under. You can actually just go from side to side here, um, just like this. And then you can put your battery on. And I'm also using Velcro here instead of this little foam pad that came with it uh, because this is just going to secure the battery a little better. Some of these foam pads have actually thrown batteries off the bottom of a quad, um, I mean even a hundred feet, because it's just not locked down to the quad very well. So uh, I always use Velcro just to make it a little more secure. Now let's go ahead inside Betaflight and I'll show you that setup. Okay, so now we're all hooked up to Betaflight. I can see that USB to UART there is activated and just wanted to show you real quickly, those LEDs on the bottom of this are flashing, waiting to be armed here. And I already have DSHOT 600 set up here uh, on the radio. So we'll go ahead and go to connect. And all the orientation is correct on here. Check that first as always, left, right, forward, and back. And let's go to the ports tab right here. And you can see that UART2 is selected here and UART3 is totally blank. After you set that up, go ahead and save and reboot. And then we'll go to configuration. Now on this one, we're going to go DSHOT 600 and you're going to turn off motor stop right here. This is one of my pet peeves. Motor stop is going to let the props not spin when you arm it. So um, it's kind of hard to tell that your quad is armed. I've had people walk over and try to pick up their quad and um, arm it on accident by hitting the throttle and fly up into them. So make sure you turn that off. Now receiver, you're going to select serial based receiver spec sat S bus. And then underneath that, the next tab down, you're going to select S bus. And all the rest of this, I'm going to leave the same down here. We're going to go down to fail safe and we're going to put the fail safe set to drop, which I always do. Pit tuning, I'm going to leave it all exactly the same so you guys can see what it flies like as stock. My super rates are all set to 0 0.70 here. And receiver, here's the receiver tab. This was not working before when I was using that other cable, that notorious cable that came with it. Um, if you know how to make this cable, sure, let everybody else know in the comments below. Now I'm going to check the yaw left, right there. looks good. We're going to check the throttle up, down. That looks good. Roll is left and right. That's good too. And now the pitch forward and backwards pitch. All of that looks good. Now the modes on here, this is the way I have it set up. I have angle, horizon, and air mode on the last switch down. That's full acro with air mode on. I have my arm switch on auxiliary three. Now the motors tab down here, you can 
you can test each motor individually. Uh, I usually take a small little prop or make a tape flag on the motor and I test the motor direction before I go out and do my maiden flight. Uh, but everything should be good here. Now we have OSD on the run cam Swift, so we don't really have to worry about the OSD menu. And all the way down to the very bottom, just gonna go ahead and check the version for you that's on this flight controller. And it's SP Racing F3 uh, 3.1, Beta Flight 3.1 from February 2017. So uh, it's, it's not an awesome type of firmware. If you go to reflash this, you won't find awesome F3 in there. Just go ahead and flash it with the firmware from SP Racing F3 and you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and disconnect this quad. Let's go outside and, and I'll show you how awesome it flies.